The long-running cartoon series called Adventure Time was first aired in April 2010. I enjoyed the show for its funny characters and its sheer genius stupidity. But what really took me aback was the insane amount of logic and planning that went into the creation of the show's universe. This was nothing like cartoons I was used to, and more in the likeness of a large comic universe like Marvel or DC. Over a period of a few years, I watched the show on Cartoon Network whenever it was aired, and managed to see just about every single episode in its 10 season run. A plot device recognised by fans, but almost never mentioned in the show, was the fact that, in its universe, the state of reality was defined by the perceptions of the conscious beings inside it. Now, I understand there are countless scientific theories as to the reason that anything exists as a concept, but I am no scientist, and I don't intend to be one. I do think, although, that I'm more or less safe to talk about this topic, because we haven't yet found an answer to this rooted in science. When I heard about it, I liked this theory. It put us, conscious life, at the very centre of existence. We were the focal point of the entire story. Adventure Time took it to a new level. Its laws dictated that since perception was the catalyst of existence itself, perception could also alter reality. This was Adventure Time's kind of backhanded explanation for the existence of magic in its universe. My small 12-year-old brain thought this was just insane. I became engrossed in the lore and history of the show, and spent an entire afternoon reading about the extended lore. I'll leave a link to the timeline I used in the description. On the whole, I think the only reason we're bothered to wonder what made reality is to feed the existential dread that we all recognised and ponder over at some point in our lives. And whilst I see the pointlessness in it, for some reason it doesn't stop me from wondering about it even more. The average life expectancy for humans right now is around 71 years. Seems unreal for those of us in developed countries, but I'm sure it doesn't come as a surprise to anyone watching. The average lifespan of a sea cucumber lasts from 5 to 10 years. Adults shed sperm and eggs into the water, and the fertilised eggs develop into larvae, which spend around 70 days as plankton before they settle on the seabed and change into miniature baby sea cucumbers. They can then live an existence of hiding among seaweed, under stones and in crevices, feeding on tiny nutritious particles near the seabed until they die. Some living organisms act more like machines than they do conscious life, like the sea cucumber. I feel like many of us define consciousness by the complexity of one's thoughts and behaviours, then give it a more fancy name, like a special ingredient in our brains and the brains of other conscious animals that gives us the supernatural ability to be conscious. But we all mean the same thing. Using that logic, why in the world would death be the end? If the universe is a playground designed for conscious life, then why stop at death? Some type of afterlife sounds cool. Reincarnation also sounds cool. But does that mean the soul is a thing? Is the soul consciousness? No idea. Do we have to know? Of course not. Philosophers spend their entire lives dwelling on the reason that it exists without experiencing what it was. I've come to understand that if knowledge brings you one step closer to enlightenment, experience brings you five steps closer. But that obviously doesn't mean we can't be introspective at all. People who don't try and figure themselves out lose themselves in the monotony of modern existence. The cliché, desk job alcoholic who's divorced twice and lives for the sake of it. I think that's probably worse to do that. All in all, it's good to have a 50-50 between dwelling on your state of mind and self and interacting with the world around you. That, in itself, is in my opinion hard to achieve. But, even harder than that, is to do that, but also apply the knowledge that you have from your introspection into your active life. Those people are truly amazing. Modern society has left my generation disconnected from one another, and boy does that make me sound like a parrot, but it's much more true and goes much deeper than the boomers mean it to be. Suicide and depression are higher than ever, and I think the reason for it goes something like this. In the past, our lives would include ourselves, hopefully our family and friends that we're close to. That would be our world, and it would be more than enough. Now, thanks to the internet, we're in the face of everything, and that makes it hard to focus down on our puny little lives. Everyone these days desires to be the kings and queens of the world, but what about being fulfilled in your own small but meaningful existence? It's never recognised, but the higher and higher up you go in the modern food chain, you don't feel magically more content, happier and fulfilled. Sure it helps, but the contentment needs to come from inside you. The stereotype of the wise old man living in the peaceful mountain countryside who drinks tea and admires the sunset over the river? In my opinion, that guy has found his happy place, and his contentment. He knows what's up. He cares about his grandkids who come over every so often and play in the garden and sit on the riverside. Many of you would disagree that this was a fulfilling lifestyle, and you would be right. 
No one is the same when it comes to the life they want to live. You may have aspirations beyond the life that you have, and they could eat away at you until you go for them. For you guys, I see you, and I think you should go for it. But once you've done that, once you've seen your dreams through to the end, recognize what matters to you. And I bet what matters to you is the people that you love in your life. Your friends you bet along the way, and your family who've supported you. Because in the end, that's what matters to everyone. Meaningful human interaction has this profound effect on people. Those people become your memories, and those memories become your life. The universe is full of stories of each and every person in it. And yes, I know how abstract and dumb that statement is. But take my description of life being a collection of memories, and apply it to each life being a story. Maybe then I've got to you. Do you see how insanely cool and amazing the universe actually is? A collection of beautiful, heartwarming, tragic, brutal, fantastic stories that don't need to be written down in order to be appreciated. If you do, and if I've helped you see that, then that's my goal achieved. That would be my fulfillment.